Hey friends, so uh, today we are going to plant some of my ranunculus in pots. I picked up this beauty from Lowe's and yeah, we're going to get into the soil maple. So just like a bucket full compost. Uh, if there are any large pieces, just break them up with your hands. So some compost and then I'm also going to do another bucket full of peat moss as well as, I want to say all of this bag, but we're going to put in maybe half this bag first. Oh, perlite, and then I'm going to grab a bucket of peat moss. All right, one bucket of peat moss. Wow. We're going to give that a good mix. I will show you guys what this looks like once everything is incorporated. My compost is already wet, so I haven't soaked any of this yet. Ranunculus typically prefer a drier soil, uh, so I do not want to get this too saturated, especially since I am going to be relying on rain a lot to water this. We have fairly wet springs, so. I don't think I'm going to be saturating this too much, like I said, so. All right, this actually looks really good. So these container sizes are 46 quarts. Um, you'll be able to buy bags of potting soil if you would rather do that instead of making your own. It is going to be probably in bags of 32 or 64 quarts. And I would say you don't need a full amount, the full 32 is probably fine. You don't need 64 because what I'm going to do anyways, I'm actually going to put some uh, logs or sticks and straw at the bottom of this. And also some uh, kitchen straps. I'm going to put some chopped up peppers and other pieces of like strawberry, you know, the typical stuff you get when you're cooking in the kitchen. I'm going to put that in the bottom as well to attract worms and other life forms in here because I prefer a more bioactive soil than a sterile potting medium. I typically transform my potting soils into giant compost buckets to keep them refreshed and full of nutrients. You do not need to throw out your potting soil and get new potting soil every year. I've heard some people doing that. Don't do that. Get some kitchen scraps, bury them in your pots, in between seasons, so if you're planting annuals like this, over the winter, over the fall, whenever your plants die back, put some kitchen scraps in there. Compost in place. All right, let's take a look. Look at that, see? So that's definitely got enough perlite in there. Okay, we're gonna get some logs. All right. Got some leftover firewood. This one's even got some lichen growing on it. And we're just gonna put my new empty pot here. We're gonna hold on. Oh, bust out these drainage holes. Oh, yeah. And I'm gonna put as best as I can anyway, these guys in. I might have to chop them up a bit. Nah, that's fine. They don't have to be perfectly in the bottom. Again, we're trying to um, just maximize the amount of volume we're going to be getting out of this. So that's the, that's the real purpose here. All right, perfect. I might also go grab some leaves. I'm going to go grab some leaves, put them in my bucket, and we will get a uh, those kitchen scraps that I'm talking about. Get my bucket. Okay, you're back again. All right, buddies, I'm back again. So, I got my kitchen scraps. I have some leaves in here, and also whatever weed I also happen to pick up. I'm not worried about the weed part. It's not going to matter much. Um, they're all at the bottom here. They're going to be at least eight hundred under soil. I'm really doing this. Take all this in because I want 
the biology. I want to inoculate, so to speak, this container, again, to make it more appealing to worms. We're going to get some of these kitchen scraps in here. I've got an apple core, some, some house plant that died, um, and some cilantro in here. I want to save enough for the other containers, so we're only going to put a little. And you don't want to put too much in here anyway, because what we don't want to happen is this to heat up so bad that um, it sort of creates a amount of uh, heat like in a composting situation where it can get up to like 140 degrees, that's going to burn the roots of my plants. I'm really, again, doing this, hoping that it will cold compost uh, in place here and attract those worms and other beneficial organisms. Um, I might also go get some Bokashi bran from inside the house and sprinkle a little bit in here as well to help in case there's anything anaerobic, meaning without oxygen, any anaerobic conditions. Uh, yeah, we're going to do that too. <laughs> All right, time to go get the Bokashi. Bokashi brine is not necessary part of this step. It is just something that I like to do to ensure that if there's any anaerobic conditions, that I am at least inoculating it with beneficial... Um, beneficial agents that will help break it down and you won't get that bad stinky uh, anaerobic type of uh, bacteria so yeah okay so now we're good take a look we've got our logs in here we've got our leaves our food scraps our bokashi bran and we're looking good we're ready to put on that potting soil mix I'd like to say welcome to my inner thought process. This entire video, I feel like, has been um, an ADHD gardener. <laughs> Maybe you're like me, though. <laughs> and you often struggle with the sequence of events and your random ideas. All right. So we are going to dump this in now. Okay. All right. Get that. I'm going to just cover this and then I'm going to spray some water. We're going to put some water in here. Let's shake this a bit so it settles. Because I'm worried that if I don't water part of this, it'll be harder to saturate later on. I don't want the soil to be hydrophobic later on where it sort of uh, repels water. So we're going to put more water in here. I do have my bucket and a spigot right here. So I'm just going to turn on the water and pour it over. We're not going to get too fancy. So just a little bit, maybe a few inches in my bucket. Looks good. All right. Oh, I've got a bee friend hanging out. He must have smelled the food scraps. <laughs> All right, so I am going to put a little bit of water in the rest of this potting mix before I put it on and then just mix it in that container. All right, perfect. Again, just a few inches of water. Dump that into my bucket. All right, move, move these bad boys around. So here's kind of where we're at. That's halfway full. Do you see how the water has saturated? This is this is good. Yeah, this is this is good. We're gonna mix up the rest of our water. Hi, B. All right. The rest of our water, rest of our potting mix that is mixed with water. This is nice and damp not too moist, not dripping. Like I can squeeze this, no water's falling out. That's how you know, good even moisture. Oh, I'm so excited. <clears throat> All right, there we are. And we are ready to go get the ranunculus 
and plant them. Here they are. So the roots on these bad boys are so good. You'll see what I what I mean in a second here. And then we're pre pretty much what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to experiment with this year is I am actually just going to pull them out and then position them by laying them on top of the soil. And then I'm not actually going to I'm going to bury the roots, but not the corms. For the corms, I'm going to put a layer of straw over the top of this when I am done to help protect them. Ranunculus do not like to have their feet wet. Come on, bad boy. Whoa. The roots gently squeeze these apart, help them go in different directions, and then place them on top of the soil. Oh my gosh, very exciting. All right, let's get some more. In fact, I won't bore you by staying with me. I'll just bring you back once we've got everyone in place and you can see how many I managed to, um, to fit in here. All right, I got everybody in place and I wanna show you how many we fit. We fit 10. But what I noticed, unfortunately, I had a lot of greenery on these, but they weren't establishing good roots. Look at this. So I would, they just came completely loose from the corms and some of them actually looks like there were issues uh, again with water so they were probably sitting too wet for too long and a lot of the roots started to uh, decay which is sad because what you want is this you want all this beautiful root growth I'm gonna come back in here now with straw put a layer of straw over everybody settle everybody down I'm not gonna water them because again these are already saturated the potting soil is saturated um, and I don't I, I don't want that to happen um, like what happened over here so we're just gonna do a layer of straw let everybody's roots kind of dig into the potting soil beneath it and then that'll be it because these need to stay dry that's basically how I'm going to do it this year I might see if I can nurse along whatever ranunculus in here still have corms and just put them into some dry soil and see if we can get them to to make it because that sucks oh that sucks but things happen people make mistakes so um i hope this gave you inspiration for potting your annuals um what are you growing what flowers are you excited about this year tell me in the comments below i would love to hear about it all right see you next time bye